Welcome to another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And this is episode 191. 191. What are we doing today? This is coming out of the spiritual closet. Yay. Yay. There is the light. Yeah, we've been there. We yeah, know. I know, but it's still a fo- good feeling. Yeah, for sure. Well, before we hop into that episode, do you have anything you want to talk about from last week? Yes. So last week we did all about pets and I want to thank you guys for those questions. Again, we answered mm-hmm. all of the animal questions and also for the feedback for the readings that I did. I, I don't have any of those to read today because we've got a lot to get to. But if you want to see the feedback, you can always go to the Spiritual Philosophy Chatter page and people put their feedback right there. Yeah, good so, idea. Yep. This last week was also exciting because Danny was a guest on my radio show. Yay. So if you didn't have a chance to listen to that, you can listen to it on demand. Just search Beyond the Bridge on any podcast platform and you'll see it there. And it was have fun. Listen. It was Thanks fun. for having me. Yeah, thanks for being on. It was cool. It's like a crossover <laughs> show. Yeah, I was, was like, exciting. thanks for engineering my show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a good time, good time. So, okay, and then every week we answer two questions. So let me get the first question. This is from Jen. She says, what suggestions do you have to help awaken gifts? I guess I'm really looking for guidance on where to even start. There's so much information out there. I know I'm very intuitive, empathetic, and I've listened to your podcast on Lightworkers, and it deeply resonated, I deeply resonated with that. I've always been very in tune and into all things woo-woo, but was admonished for it and told it was the work of the devil, et cetera, et cetera. At a base level, how do you say, okay, universe, I'd like to fully turn on these abilities that have been there that I have always tucked away and ignored for 40 years. I think I've been searching for a mentor of sorts to help explain and sort through it all that's been through it themselves. Okay, so first, anybody that's looking for a mentor, I'm happy to do this for you. Jen and I have been talking a little bit about this since she sent me this. Um, But I would be happy to help in these situations because I've I've been there. I've been through it and and understand. Um, I actually like this question so much that I've decided to turn this topic into my radio show for this coming week. Oh, cool. About opening up your abilities. Um, But I'm figured we'd just give like a brief rundown real quick of a few things that you can do it first of all it's it's important to know that it takes time just like anything else just like you know you're going to start a new hobby and it's going to take time to get good at it Mm -hmm. and accumulate the things that you know if you want tarot cards and and those types of things it takes time to get all of that going so Mm -hmm. give yourself time there's no rush um you know it's yeah not If you're seeking it, you will find it. It, You will see it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Finding your tribe, and we'll talk about that in the episode today too, like meeting like-minded people is very helpful. When I decided that I wanted to try and open my gifts and see what these were all about, I really didn't know where to start. I didn't know who to turn to. And I decided I'm going to go on Facebook and like, because there's Facebook groups for everything, absolutely Mm -hmm. everything. And I found Facebook groups that help people to open up their abilities, learning groups where they do different practice uh, things like they might put a crystal in their hand and then take a picture of their hand and say, what, what color is the crystal inside or what is inside my hand? You know, there might be a lighter (laughs) there or an eraser or whatever. And you have to try and figure out what it is, or they put pictures up there of themselves or loved ones or whatever. And you can do practice readings. That's probably the best place I think to start. Because then you can see if you are actually already connecting or not. Like, I had no idea what I, no clue what it was supposed to feel like or anything. So I just went in those groups and started practicing and and figured out, you know, what kind of felt right. Mm -hmm. So, so that's probably where I would start. And then, um, like I said, for the radio show this week, I will get into depth about this topic. Cool. So, yeah. Very cool. So thank you for the question, Jen. Thanks, Jen. 
And then the next one is actually from my sister and brother-in-law. They always come up with these really cool questions. And they're like, do you need questions for the show? I'm like, I could always use questions for the show. <laughs> I love them. So this one, uh, they asked, when a pet passes away and they decide to reincarnate, how do they choose what to come back as? The reason that they asked this question is because they recently had a dog that passed away. And Amanda was like, you know, if he wanted to come back as a horse, I don't want a horse right now. So how do they choose what they're going to come back as? Well, I think that they choose depending on what you are looking for at that time in your life. Yeah. I really think that Zuma, our great Dane, could possibly be the reincarnation of my very first ferret. So if that is the case, if he is Sneezers, then it wouldn't have made sense for her to come back as a ferret because I live in California and they're illegal here. And mm. I don't want ferrets anymore. So it only would make sense for her to come back as an animal that I would be willing to adopt and bring into my life, like a dog. And I've always wanted a Great Dane, so it just made sense. Right. It just absolutely made sense. And I think that's how they choose. They choose based on what it is that we want at that point in our lives. Right. And a lot of times I don't think we even know what we want. So they might, it might just, you know, show up as, as a horse and be, you know, oh, I'm going to have a horse now. You just yeah. never know. That's a good question. I don't, I don't know if you can really truly answer it. No. Because it could, like you said, have a lot of uh, bearing on what your situation is. Mm hmm what it requires or could use. And maybe that soul of that animal has something else to learn. Yeah. Besides being a dog or being a cat. Yeah. Maybe they need to learn what it's like to be a different animal. Yeah, absolutely. So there could be a very, you know, a variety of things that come into play when the decision is made. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes we don't even know what we really want. Like we might think, yeah. oh, I want another dog. But really, like, there's something else out there that maybe, you know, like when we found Zuma, I actually thought we were going to get another Labrador. Like, I had major puppy fever, but right. I didn't think we were going to find a Great Dane like that. It didn't even occur to me, you know. So I got something that I had always wanted, but I wasn't really asking for it right. at the time. So they just bring us what we're supposed to have. But also something that I wanted to throw in with this that I do get asked a lot is how you'll know when your pet is coming back to you. And I really want to make it it known that your animal will never go to the wrong person. You, If you have like a litter of puppies to choose from and you're afraid that you're going to choose the wrong puppy, don't be afraid. Because I really truly feel and believe from what I've been told that the soul doesn't even go into the body <coughs> until after these kinds of decisions have been made. So if you are, yeah. <laughs> Betty is just, she's on Not, one tonight. Yeah, she's really going off. <laughs> She doesn't like us to talk sometimes, and <laughs> we're doing this in the evening, and so she's It's our like, job, man. Relax. Yeah, yeah be quiet. We're talking it's... here. We're talking. Oh, I totally lost my train of thought there. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, about the um, animals. Oh, shoot. I totally lost my train of thought. Anyways, whatever. <laughs> I, I think I got my point across um, about that. Yeah. So. Yeah, about the reincarnation. So, Very good anyways, question. Yeah, thanks, thanks Betty. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, and thanks for the question. Thanks to the birds. Yeah. Okay, and then before we do the episode, let's do reading. So this is an interesting reading because I actually met this lady, Kelly, at the very beginning of my spiritual journey. Like, I don't really <clears throat> remember a lot of things. So I want to say that this was in the first six months of learning that I was a psychic. And she has a dog that was stolen five years ago. And when I first started doing this type of work, I was really into lost pets. And I still do a lot of them. But mm -hmm. um, I didn't really realize how hard it was at the beginning of all of this. Yeah. And so I did work on her dog, Creed, a little bit. I don't remember any of it at all. I just remember that he was stolen and that um, she never found him and all that. So I wanted to do this for her to just check in and see. Um, she asked, uh, is he happy? Is he alive? Is he close by? So I just thought that we would check in with Creed and see cool. you know, what, what's going on with him. Um, I do feel that he is still alive. I do feel that he's living with a family. And to me, this feels like this is who he's been with since uh, he went missing. It feels like a family that has at least one child. But it, I'm going to say that there's two children because I see one that's a little 
that's older and one that's smaller, like maybe they've just had a child in the last few years. I see him being a very good family dog. He's very good with their kids. Um, <clears throat> he's fit in there perfectly and has had a very happy life, and they take very good care of him. He's very spoiled. <laughs> this is a nice house in a nice area. Um, I don't know how close it is to you. Um, I want to say it, it, it's within 10 miles, but but more closer to the 10 mile mark. Uh, this looks like a very upscale area. There's lots of grass, lots of like um, playgrounds and stuff. So uh, definitely he goes to this park with the kids too. Um, the thing here is like, even if I could find him, which is like finding a needle in a haystack, <laughs> even if I could find him, he's settled now. He's happy now. So yeah. you wouldn't want to, you know, disrupt his life. I know that there's always that closure that would be needed. Yeah. And, you know, this place that I'm talking about, uh, the upscale area with with the playgrounds and stuff, if you know where I'm talking about and you decide to, you know, go there and look and see if you see him, great. But here's some suggestions to you. If you were to see him, just let it go. You know that he's safe now. Like, if you were to come across him like that, you know he's safe. But he's he has this life and yeah. he is happy and it would just throw everybody's, you know, life into chaos. Right. So, um, but he wants you to know that he does remember you and he loves you and he's sorry that this is how things happen, but he hopes that you are happy to know that he is doing well and being very well taken care of. And he feels very healthy to me. I don't feel any issues at all. So that's good. So yeah, he's doing well. So I hope that that helps, Kelly. And I'm so sorry. There's so many people that yeah. they go through this. And what a horrible thing to just <clears throat> always wonder what happened to my dog or it cat It is something or to consider, though. I like that you brought that up. Um, to consider the dog's life. <clears throat> because I think that, excuse me, <clears throat> that like there are dogs and we sort of treat them like our family and our babies, especially if you're just a super pet person. Um, you sort of get that in your head. Well, that's mine. That's my baby. Yeah, right. Well, the truth is, no, we didn't actually give birth to these creatures. We gave them a home yeah. and love. And that is something to consider, even though it's sad that the dog got away or got out and ran away and then was picked up by another family. But what a blessing that it was picked up by a good family. Yes. And taken well care of. And to come in... <clears throat> And turn that dog's life upside down again. Yeah. Yes. To take it back. Yes. It would be different if you could see the dog outside, you know, and you knew where it was living and it was being neglected and you could sure. see it was emaciated and yeah. yada yada. Then yeah. I could understand. Yeah. But this is different, I think. Yes, for sure. The, the, the dog has a life. And it would be completely right. wrong to disrupt that. So. It has a psychosis itself, like a mind, yeah. you know what I mean? And you can mess with its mind. Yes. You know, they, they suffer trauma just like we do. Absolutely, they do. So. so I hope that that helps you a little bit, Kelly. And I'm so sorry that you still haven't had that kind of closure with Creed. Yeah, that's Sucks. tough. Sorry. So before we go into the episode, let's give our info. Okay. So you can find me at samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. You can find my radio show Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time at voiceamerica.com on the Empowerment Channel, or you can find it on demand on any of the major podcast platforms uh, within a few hours of the show airing. So hope cool. you'll have a listen this week. And like I said, if you haven't listened to the episode that Danny was on, you should because it was really good. It was fun. Yep. And then you, sir. Yes, for my art, djonesartcollection.com for the web, at djonesartcollection for Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Okay. All right, then. Episode 191, coming out of the spiritual closet. This is something that was really hard for me to do at first. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, so I love to talk about it, and I love to help people to realize <clears throat> that it's okay. Um, but first, let's, let's just hit briefly on what is the spiritual closet. If you are into meditation, crystals, astrology, psychics, energy healing, this podcast even, and you haven't had a conversation with the important people in your life about these things and that you enjoy them, you are somewhat in the spiritual closet, yeah. at least to a certain degree. Yeah. Uh, 
it can be really, really hard to open up about this type of lifestyle because for whatever reason, even though I don't want to consider this a religion because it's it, it, it's really not. It's, no. it's spirituality, which is a different way of life. But people look at it as a religion yeah. and they think it's the religion for the crazy people. <laughs> like the Christians, the Jews, the rest of them, they're fine. They're normal. But then you have these spiritualists that believe that mm-hmm. they can talk to the dead or, you know, the pagans that perform rituals and stuff. So yeah. we're crazy. So I understand totally. Yeah. You know, it, it's hard to open up to friends, family, whoever yeah. about this type of thing. Um, so we're going to talk about all that. But let's look at these polls that I did this week with our listeners. The very first one is, do you hide your spir- spirituality from people? If so, from who? And 33% said no. The rest of them are pretty spread out as to who they're keeping these secrets from. Hmm. 25% said other family members besides parents. And then coworkers was the next one. In-laws, my friends, and my parents. So these were all ones that people said that they keep these types of things from. You know, I've been doing this now professionally for five years, and there are still people that I keep this from. Yeah. So I wouldn't say, I mean, I am out of the spiritual closet, but like I understand people that are afraid to talk about this with family members, friends, whoever, because a lot of times, like I said, they, you will feel like they're looking at you like you're crazy. Right. Uh, or like, for example, I have um, a kind of a family member. My grand, my step grandfather has three daughters from a previous marriage and they're very, very religious. And we have had a lot of problems in the past with our relationship. Mm-hmm. And I finally feel like we can be human to each other. And a lot of that is because of the changes that I've made in my life. But I don't feel comfortable telling her what I do for a living. Right. She still thinks I'm a pet sitter. <laughs> <laughs> and we will keep it at that. You know, because sometimes it is difficult. You don't want to rock the boat. Yeah. You're, you know, that really is what it is with her. I just figure it's just Some things are just better left unsaid. Like she's not a part of my life, really. So what's the point? There there is a general reason that people don't, you know, want to come out and say this is their belief. And that is, you know, for being viewed whatever crazy. Yep. But then there are, there's those individual relationships and individual reasons. Yeah. Maybe it's a close confidant at work. But you're like, ah, if I bring this up, they, they're they pretty close with management and they might say something and they might find a reason to get rid of me. Yeah. Or if I say this to my parents, they're going to think, you know, this of me. Yeah. So I think there there is a general reason to want to keep it away from s- most of the people in your life. And then there are these individual reasons. But I think we still have to ask ourselves, why? Right. Like, why do we not want to just be okay with that right no matter what anybody thinks or says and i think that's just a long history of being programmed by society yes when i first opened these abilities and and i've been an animal communicator my whole life which was kept a secret secret from most people i don't Mm. even think i told my mother this Mm. um so yeah but when my abilities came out the rest of them I said to you, one of the first things I said to you is, tell no one. This stays between (laughs) us. Tell no one. Uh, And I know that that was very hard for you. Yeah, because (laughs) the flip side, if you listen to last week's episode, I'm talking about how I'm like, well, here's the answer to the, the financial situation. Right. You know, there. That's your answer. That's your job. You know what the problem was, and I think that this is something that uh, not just <clears throat> with psychics when you learn about your abilities, but even like in this situation where you're, you know, you're having a spiritual awakening is you're so fresh to it, you don't really know exactly what's going on and what you believe. And so it's hard to even tell people, you know, I'm having these feelings and and I think maybe I need to explore them and open them up because you don't even know how you're feeling yourself. And if you do, it's so fresh, you might think, oh, I might be wrong with this. And so I'm afraid, you know, if I go and talk to somebody else about this, that they might, you know, discourage me. I might I might sound stupid or, or whatever. There's so many things that we put into our own heads. Yeah. You know, I I think for me, um, 
I don't want to say like at that moment when you really realized and being there, it was kind of more of a spectator thing for me, Mm -hmm. like watching this unfold and happen and realizing that this is now making me question everything, Mm -hmm. everything. And there was part of this, yes, this point where I want to jump on top of the roof and shout it out (laughs) that not all the secrets, but the truth has been shared with me, you know? And then there was that part that wanted to be refrained and, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. But there was still this general excitement of like, I knew it. I knew all that religious crap was a bunch of BS. I knew it. I knew that aliens are real. I knew it. But they were just reaffirming all these things for me. Yeah. And so it had a level of excitement for me. But again, I was, I went through my own spiritual awakening as a result of it. But it right. wasn't like it opened up for me like that. Yeah, exactly. It's it's different, I guess, coming from my perspective as, as <clears throat> learning that I'm a psychic and that is what started the spiritual awakening for me, where mm. for you it was watching me and, and hearing the things that were coming out of my mouth and all of that. So it was kind of a different type of experience for you. I don't think it was as much for you when you started talking about the spirituality that you were afraid to talk to people about it because it's no. like, what difference does it make? But for me, because what I do is so taboo, yeah. it's difficult. It still is difficult. Like, mm-hmm. I have a hard time when people ask me what I do for a living. I kind of chuckle mm-hmm. first because I don't really know what to say. Yeah. And it usually comes out as something so dumb. Like, I'll just yeah. be like, I'm a psychic or whatever. Because I don't really know what to say. Like, yeah. I, I go through all the things in my head. Should I say spiritual coach? <clears throat> what should I say? Because... You know that there's people out there that absolutely believe that this is not real, that none of it's real. No, <clears throat> I, I've had very close friends that were deep, you know, rooted in uh, church and Christianity growing up. So that's a hard thing to yeah. <clears throat> not be able, you know, it's a hard thing to be able to see past when it's so a big part of your life. Yeah, That wasn't the case in my home. My family wasn't really religious. Yeah. So I did have this freedom, I felt like, to ponder and search for my own answers. Yeah. Which I was already doing. I did try to do the church thing. Yeah. But I can see the difference in the relationship with some of these people. Oh, yeah. And their families, their immediate families. of. And it's a bummer, but... <clears throat> I know in my heart, you know? Yes. That is one thing that with this way of life that I actually really, I enjoy all of it. But one thing that I enjoy is being open to other people's religions. Like, I don't want to be the religion that they are. But if somebody's Christian or Jewish or Muslim or whatever they are, good for you. I'm glad that you have found something, that you have some kind of faith. I'm not going to try and change your mind about what you believe. And I'd appreciate it if you don't try and change my mind and we can coexist and we can be friends. But a lot of really religious people do not believe that at all. You know, that goes against everything that their religion says. First of all, is to condemn others for not seeing it your way or believing it your way. I have some really religious people in my life, and this was one thing that did concern me about doing this. But I think that we have to be honest with ourselves. I know we have to be honest with ourselves. If we're just living our lives so that other people are more comfortable, Mm -hmm. then what what is that doing? We're just living our lives for other people. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is to not feed into that. Yeah. Not allow it to push my button or get me angry. Like, I have a really close friend that I went to school with um, and their religion is Jewish. And I remember mentioning something about what you could do when Mm -hmm. this first started happening. And they were like, Oh, that's a crock of shit. And I was like, I could, I could do a number of things. (laughs) I could hang up the phone. Yeah. Never speak to you again. Yeah. I could bash your religion. Right. Or I can just smile or say, okay, 
and let it play out the way it's going to play out. Exactly. I understand. I get it because you know what? I wasn't a 100% <clears throat> believer too until this happened. Oh, I wasn't. No. So I totally get it. And you're going to have people in your life like, okay, I'm 45 years old and most people that, I've, that I'm close to, they don't know Samantha the psychic, like no. the ones that I've known my whole life. Like my brother, mm -hmm. it's really interesting to be around my brother because we're really close, but this part of my life is weird to talk to him about. Right. It's really, really weird to talk about. Um, so, it, I don't, and I don't know why. I guess I feel like he's known me his whole life. He doesn't know this side of me. Right. And now all of a sudden, here I am. Here's your psychic sister that's trying to give you intuitive advice mm -hmm. and, you know, stuff like that. It's just different. But, you know, I don't I, think he's I was, going anywhere. I, you know, I wasn't a hardcore skeptic, but I wasn't a hardcore believer. However, I will admit that there is a benefit and there is a downside, too. But there is a benefit to being married to somebody like you or spending my life with somebody like you. Yeah. Because you have shared things um, years in advance that would occur. Yeah. And I mean good things. Yeah. You know, not particularly bad things. Right. That's reassuring, but I still have to have faith from the moment that it is, leaves your mouth. Yes. <laughs> that that's actually going to occur. It's true. Yeah, that's true. So the next thing I asked our listeners is if you're afraid of being yourself spiritually around people, what is what is it that you fear? And 42 percent said being called crazy. That's honestly at the top of my list, too. Why does it matter? Why does it matter what other people think of us? But Christians get called crazy. Um, Islam gets called crazy. That's true. Yeah. I mean, even some Jewish people, you know, I, yeah. so... I don't know what religion hasn't, or if you want to call what we believe in even a religion, I don't know what hasn't come under fire at some point yeah, in time. True. So, yes. yeah, it, there is that fear. Yep. Of like, are they going to think I'm crazy? Yep. The next one was backlash from religious people. Again, if we could all just, you know, do our own lives and stay out of everybody else's business, we could coexist and be happy and be friends, you know. That's easier said than done it is. For, for me because, or for others, because for me, I didn't grow up with such a deep-rooted family like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if you were like down in the South, a Southern Baptist, and this has been in your family for generations and generations, and you're the first to step out and say, no, yeah. something's not jiving with me. Yeah. On this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to rock a boat probably. Yeah, for sure. The next one was, I don't like confrontation. And this is a, a touchy subject for a lot of people. When I first decided to come out of the spiritual closet, because I knew that this career was building, this was a big concern of mine was, are people going to be nice or are they going to say right. rude things? Because I'm a very non-confrontational. Yeah. yeah. Sensitive, non-confrontational. I don't want to argue with anybody. This is my life and I'm going to live it the way I want to live it. Yeah. So if you don't like it, there's the door. You know, that mm -hmm. was pretty much my stance with this. Um, but anybody that tries and start something with me. And it has happened a few times. I cut it down really fast. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to happen. It's just, sorry, this is my life. Mm. That's part of it. A yeah. part of the awakening is realizing nobody else's opinion really get, matters. That's right. In the, in the grand scheme of it all, we're going to leave this place and we're going to go. I saw this on TikTok earlier and I kind of want to quote this guy because it was this guy's experience of a near-death experience. And he was like, I couldn't believe that I was so convinced I was this person with all these relationships mm -hmm. and issues when it was all an illusion. So in the end, not one thing really matters yeah. other than your own mind. Yep. Because he did say everything else about my nature was different. I had no body, but I was fully conscious. I was still me. Yeah, yeah. So I have to carry this over and over and over again. 
no matter where I go, I'm going to still be me. Yep. But that me may not necessarily have the same views as that person. Right. But I do, you know, I do believe that um, it's so much greater, yeah. you know, and we're all afraid of that. I mean, Christ got hung on a cross for speaking yeah. the truth. It's true. They want to shut him down. They don't want people walking on water and feeding starving people and curing blind. And and all he's saying is, if I don't even have to be the only one to do this. Right. Yep. There's a fear there that lies with people that don't understand things like this. If I can prove to somebody that I can heal something like mm-hmm. the hiccups or back pain or whatever... I'm going to probably be called a witch. I'm going to be said, there, you know, there's something wrong right. with me or whatever. No, just like Jesus was a healer, anybody can be a healer. Yes. It, we can heal ourselves. Mm-hmm. But Jesus did it, and that's cool. But Samantha does it, mm-hmm. and she's crazy and a witch. <laughs> you know, it's just. But when Jesus did sense. it, it wasn't cool. That's what I'm saying. Well, yes. He was coming out of this closet, too. Now it's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now it's cool. But right. I mean, at the time, it wasn't cool. Right. He was sort of coming out of a closet, too, going, this old way of thinking, yeah. you know, meaning like Old Testament kind of stuff, is not the way. Yeah. The yeah. What I'm telling you is the way. And that is just believing. Yep. Because this is all an illusion. Yep. That's exactly right. When we open up new things in our life, we get excited about these things and we want to share it with the people in our lives and we want to find Mm -hmm. like-minded people to talk to and to learn from. And so it's really hard when you have this new way of life and you can't communicate anymore with your friends the way that you did before or with your family. I have experienced that it's... it. I have, I'm very blessed that the friends that have stayed in my life are very accepting and they will actually interact and ask me questions, but I have had to let friendships go because of how awkward this made things, Mm -hmm. especially with the really religious people. Like, what do we have to talk about now? Yeah. It's made it very uncomfortable. Yeah. So it really in this is a lot about finding your tribe and the people that, you know, you can relate to. So I want to read a couple of the comments uh, from listeners about the fear part of becoming who you are spiritually. Brittany said, at this point in my journey, I don't think I'm fearful. However, I no longer feel the urge to have to be right. And with some strong personalities or super pushy religious people, it's just not worth the drama to Mm -hmm. discuss the topic with them. After all, we will all be dancing together on the other side one day. Yep. Totally Love true. Love that response, Brittany. That's yep. awesome. I wish everybody felt that way. Mm-hmm. It would make things so much easier. Yep. So much. And then Nancy said, interestingly enough, I don't feel afraid of sharing my thoughts about my spirituality. I am, however, positive that my friends and family all think I'm nuts. <laughs> but rest assured that I don't care because I am deeply rooted in my faith and I truly believe that in the end they will say, I guess you weren't crazy after all. You're going to be like one of those, like where I mention it now and then, you know, you're like someone comes into heaven or yeah, or you're they're already there. Or you're already there. And it's kind of one of those. Hey, <laughs> yep. Yep, exactly. Hey. And uh, I told you so for the back. of the <laughs> <room>. hey. <laughs> I, There's another way of looking at this, too, of coming out of the spiritual closet. And that is, are you afraid to let go of your religious beliefs and mm-hmm. come out of that closet yourself? That's a great point. Yeah. I feel like you do. You, It rocks your foundation yep. of everything that you were either taught in school or by your parents or somebody else. We learn everything from each other. Yep. You know, and theories change. Yeah. Um, New things are discovered. And so I can't necessarily go back to a textbook that I was reading in elementary school and go, what they said right there about the pyramids. Yeah. That's it. Case closed. (laughs) Yeah. Boom. They're right. I'm not. I can't accept that. Right. Because knowledge is like never ending. Mm Mm-hmm. And we're 
talking about an area of the world that's been buried under tons and tons of sand. Yeah. They haven't even begun to dig up, you know. Hundreds of thousands of years worth of stuff. There's so much under there that we don't even know. And that's just, that's on land. Yeah. What about catastrophes that have happened before about civilizations that are underwater? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I did ask this question to the listeners. I said, are you afraid to let go of religious beliefs you were taught in order to live a more spiritual life? And 88% said no. <coughs> Sorry. Still carrying this stupid COVID I have it too. Later. Apologize for the... Yeah, it's horrible. Coughing. Three weeks later, still coughing. Um, but yeah, so 88% said no. And nobody said yes, so that was great. 12% said I'm not sure. And a couple of the comments here, Amanda said, I'm not afraid, but it's like I have this mental block and I can't seem to get past it. Currently trying to, I'm in therapy to figure out how to move forward. And Melissa said, I thought I was atheist, but too many things have happened that have to be from a higher power. Mm. I hear that a lot. Mm. Um, because I think that these like religions, like, um, even like, especially some of the branches of Christianity that are like really strict, Mm -hmm. it can be a really big turnoff. And then instead of searching for something else, you just go atheist because it's like, what's the point? Right. But was that Nancy that last call? No, that was Melissa. Melissa. Um, but she made a good point that too many things are happening for her to ignore. Yes. We're all sort of brought to awakening in different times in our life, in different ways. But I definitely believe our sort of that part of us that doesn't remember the past, that doesn't remember heaven. Right. When we start saying things like that to ourselves, like too many strange things have been happening for me to ignore. Yes. That is like the universe trying to sort of shake you awake yep. a little bit. Get your attention. Yep. And go, you can believe what everybody else believes or what the popular vote is. Yeah. Or you can look a little bit deeper or closer at the things that are being shown to you every day in the smallest of ways. That's right. And start seeing patterns. Yep. And what we would say as humans as coincidences. But there is no such thing. Yeah. In my opinion. So, no yeah, I, I love that one. Yeah. So let's talk about some tips for coming out of the psychic or coming out of the spiritual closet. How do you do that? What are the steps that you can take to maybe feel more comfortable? Well, one of the first things is to start slow. Like, I think a lot of times when we open something like the spiritual awakening, it's like, whoa, this is cool. It's scary, but it's cool. And I want to do Try to do it all right now. Yeah. You know, and it just doesn't work like that. So start slow. Um, When it comes to things like trying to maybe put the clues out there to people, you know, um, like I'm coming, becoming more spiritual. You can do things like wearing crystals Mm -hmm. or things like of the spiritual nature, like hams and hands. Things are becoming more and more available out there that are related to this. You'll see a lot of like tarot shirts and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even things that say peace and love or, or whatever on them are still leaning towards a more spiritual way of thinking, a more spiritual way of life. Um, you know, when we first started this, I was very attracted to like different types of Buddha statues. So that was one of the first things that I kind of started bringing in. Um, these things, they kind of alert people to, hmm, mm-hmm. maybe this person's looking at a different way of life. I have probably 20 crosses in my jewelry box, necklaces. Yeah. I don't wear them anymore. Yeah. I replace them with crystals. You know, um, I, I there's nothing wrong with wearing a cross. I just feel like I'm no. misrepresenting myself if I wear them because I'm not a Christian. You know? Well, yeah. I mean, if you say to me, well, what is, you know, if... If it's a matter of believing that somebody like Jesus is a son of God, but the only sort of son of God, that that's where it gets restricting for me. I go, well, wait a minute. God said he created us all in his image and we're all his children. So wouldn't that make Jesus my brother? Yeah, right? right? Aren't we kind of the same thing here? Yeah. So if it's believing that he existed, yeah, for yeah. sure. I, I do. But... 
if it's believing that you can't get to heaven unless you accept him as the one and only, sorry, that's where I hit the brakes and I totally disagree with all of it. Yep. Yep. Like, like in just one simple decision, you're going to either go to some wonderful place or you're going to go burn in a lake of fire. Right. That's, it just seems so ridiculous. It, it really is. It just doesn't make any sense at all. The state of the world is in the state that it's in because of us. We are energy. And if the majority of the planet is living in fear and anger and chaos, that's what's going to happen to the world. Yeah. But like what you're saying, these other things are now becoming marketed out there in the world to kind of get people's attention. They sure are. And say there's a different way for this world to exist. Mm Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be through fear and chaos and war and hatred and violence. It doesn't have to be. No. Or judgment and ego. It can be different. But it takes that tilting of the scale because the energy has to be a resounding yes. Yeah. (laughs) If you will. Absolutely. Um, something else is understanding that some people just won't understand or they won't be interested. No. They just, you know, it just is what it is and that's okay. You don't have to involve everybody in this part of your life. You know, no. it, it's not necessary. Um, I think that the most important part of it is just keeping it. I don't, I don't want to use the word civil because that makes it sound bad, but it's like, for me, I just feel like I want to show everybody, look at what this has done for me. Look at, it makes me a, even less of a confrontational person. Yes. It's made me crave peace and love and all of that. Um, it hasn't, it's not taking me the other way. It's not making me angry. And so it's best to just let right. it go, you know? Just yeah, putting that energy into it to argue with somebody and fight with somebody is not worth it. No, it's definitely not. Was it the... Um, the dude from the big Lebowski wheel. That's just like your opinion, man. You know, we all have one. Uh, yeah. We all have one. So they and can I'm have no, their opinion. I have no have problem yours. leaving it at that, you know, like leaving a conversation going, well, I guess we'll see in the end. Yep. I don't need to be right as I exit that conversation. Yep. Yep. Then people are going to come and go. They're going to, you know, especially when you start becoming the person that you're supposed to be, the wrong people are going to leave your life and the right people are going to start to come in. And it's scary sometimes when that happens because you go, why are you leaving? Like, am I crazy? You know, I'm not really. I'm not. That's okay. Let them go because it's their own problems with themselves Mm -hmm. that they can't get past. And and it's okay. You have to be you. And that's another thing on my list here is be yourself unapologetically. Be 100% who you are. There's a lot of people, I'm going to say this and this might rub some people wrong. There's a lot of people that have faith because a person next to them has faith. Yeah, it's true. It, it's like a popular thing. Well, if they believe it, it must be true. This is true. It's not to say it's not true. It's just to say, but is that your truth? Right. Have you sought that out and asked the questions that you felt like you needed answers to? Right. To come to some sort of understanding of what you are. Yes. Something that has come along with this spiritual awakening for me that I talk about often is just the need to be a better person. Mm -hmm. That I want to do what's right. I always want to do what's right. It doesn't mean that I always do, but I try to. Now, Samantha 10 years ago was not this person. And there's a lot of people that don't know Samantha now. They know Samantha 10 years ago. So they look at me and think, what is she doing? This isn't her. But you know what? It, It is now. It took time for me to become this person that I am. Yeah. It, it takes time to develop all of this. So you have to let go of your past and not let people tell you this isn't who you are right. or whatever, because you don't have to be that person that you were 10 years ago. Things don't bother me like they did right. then. No. I just let things roll off my shoulders most of the time. And it, I feel so much happier because of it, you know. But people want to hold on to, well, but once upon a time, you were mean to me and said this and did this. Well, you know, I I can't undo that. Yeah, you're human. Yep. But it's never too late to hit refresh. Yeah. And to restart. Yep. Anew. It's never too late. Yep. 
Absolutely. Even if it was your last breath and you decided this is the way I'm going to be, you've made that choice. Yep. But you can do it a lot earlier. Yeah. And I wasn't a very, you know, I wasn't the greatest person either. I I did a lot of stupid things. We all have. We all um, have. But I decided that, and I don't know if it's a combination of just age and maturity and then going through the awakening and seeing a different side of the world that sometimes is hard to see. Yes, it's true. It's true. And we oftentimes, when people tell us that, you know, we can't do something or this isn't who we are, we listen to them. We yes. believe them. And so then we go, okay, well, maybe this isn't who I am. Um, don't listen to the naysayers. You right. Be you. Again, back to be you yourself, 100%, unapologetically. Mm -hmm. You're not here to impress other people or live other people's lives. You're here to live your life the way you want to live it, the best way that you can. So you have to let go of what those other people are thinking. And that's hard. It is really hard. I, I'm not preaching this because I still live it. I still yeah. feel that um, concern a lot of times, you know, when I meet somebody for the first time of, is this a very religious person? And when I tell them what I do for a living or whatever, is it going to turn them off? Are they going to look at me funny? It, right. That has not gone away yet. And I don't know no. that it ever will, but I'm still myself, right. 100% myself for me, you know, yeah. and people that will, that are supposed to be in your tribe, which is the next thing I was going to talk about, they will be. So the next one is to find your tribe. Find the people that that are into the same kinds of things that you are. If you're here listening to this podcast, that's a great step. I would love to give a shout out to all the people that do and that are in that group, yes. the discussion group, mm -hmm. Yes, because that is the tribe. That is the like-minded people, and I hope you guys feel safe, that you can express your thoughts, your questions, your dreams, whatever you ponder. Yep. yep. That's what it's for. So for you guys, that makes us feel better knowing that, ah, Linda was right. Yeah. Like if we do this, there are other people, mm -hmm. you know, there are other people that ask these same questions and wonder these same things. Yep. Yes, I get messages from people, you know, multiple times a week with mm -hmm. those kinds of things, just saying thank you for being a safe place for me to talk about this and to understand that, you know, even even people that are just watching from a distance, that they can see what's going on and they can see that they're not alone. And that was something that my mom told us from the beginning, too, was that people are going to be watching. They're going to be seeing, you know, how you guys handle this, how your awakening goes, and they're going to be curious about it mm -hmm. amongst lots of other things. Um, but it's going to help other people to open themselves up. And a lot of the people that I've met and that you've met over the last five years have come in through the <laughs> podcast or through being clients. However, yeah. some of them have been friends. Some of them are people that I've known many, many, many years mm -hmm. that I actually didn't lose touch with. But, you know, you stay up friends on Facebook, but you don't really interact with. And then they see this is what I do now and yeah. that this is what, you know, my life is. And so then they start asking questions and wanting to, you know, become a part of my life again. And that's been absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So the right people, they will they will come and they will go. But you got to find your tribe. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. They are out there for sure. Um, once you find those people, a lot of times those people and others in your life might become curious about things and even maybe treat it like a novelty. If you start, you know, like if you're into crystals or tarot cards, I know a lot of people when they get into this, when they open the spiritual side, they like to play with tarot cards and others will ask, you know, will you do draw cards from me or whatever? Mm -hmm. They'll be inquisitive. It's great when people are inquisitive, yeah. you know, but don't let them take advantage of a situation either and, or treat you bad. You know, if, I think that was something that when I was an animal communicator before, before the rest of this opened, is that people did make these stupid comments, you know, like, oh, well, that seems logical, but that can't be. Right. It's not possible. You know, stuff like that. Gotta let just, just roll off your shoulders, mm -hmm. you know, because you're going to have the ones that are curious and are really positive, but you're going to have the ones that are curious and, and might be a little bit negative and all that, too. Flying to the moon seemed impossible at one point in human history yep and it's happened yep so it really it's all from a thought yes 
You know, anything is possible. Yep. Something else is to share when you want to. This was something I had a hard time with, like, on Facebook at first. I didn't, like, I have all these things I see, you know, the different spiritual things, the sayings, the the motivational posts, that kind of thing, that I didn't share at first because I didn't want people to think I had lost my mind or something. Yeah. But now I do. Now I talk about how I feel. and it, yeah. And the people that don't like it, that's okay. The people that do, it helps them. It, it, it does. I mean, even for me, like... Because I'm friends with you, so I see whatever you post. And it's like, there are often things I need to hear. Yep. It, that's why they're there. Yep, exactly. And it, the people that don't want to hear about it, that, you know, they, they just will scroll right by it. They might say something, you know. But these are right. all, I think these are all of life's tests to see how we're going to do with this too. Mm. Because like I said at the beginning, I didn't want anybody to know. Right. And even the thought of like when you said, you know, this is the answer to the financial problems is, is you know, doing readings and stuff. I yeah. thought, are you serious? Like, how am I supposed <clears throat> to do this? Then I have to actually tell people what it is I'm doing. Yeah. And I was going by the name of my show, the beyond the bridge. I was just using that when I first started working, I wasn't using Samantha Jones. I was using Sammy Michelle mm. because I was still trying to hide from people that I knew. Yeah. And it wasn't until I let that go and went, I don't care. I don't care anymore Yeah. because I know what I know and I know what I feel and I don't care anymore. And that was so freeing and mm -hmm. I don't care anymore Yeah. at all. It's really been nice. So you have to, just like anything else, you kind of have to get past that point where you just go, eh, yeah. I don't care. But it takes a while. It can take a while to get there, you know? Yeah. But you have to allow for this transformation to happen. It doesn't happen overnight. It, no. You know, it takes time for you to become this spiritual person that you might want to be to to understand a lot of these things. So just let it be natural. You don't have to, you know, go out and buy millions of crystals and, you know, show no. everybody on Facebook to make them know that you're, you know, coming out of the spiritual closet. A couple of years ago, we only had like one or two. <laughs> I mean, we have like a cabinet with a lot of now, yeah. but we've just collected them. Right. But there's a couple of points about this this way of thinking or this belief, if you are listening to this and you don't believe this way or you're not sure, you might think it's just a religion in itself. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that if that's what you want to think. But there are some points about this that I really love, and that is I don't have to evangelize. Yeah. I don't have to tithe. I don't have to get up and go to some temple. No. Every once a week, um, the temple is me. Yeah. It's here, and it resides in all of us. Yep. The spirit is in us. Yep. And we are the temple. That's why we're supposed to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Go to the doctors, you know, get rest, eat well. I don't do those all the time, but <laughs> I'm just pointing well. out that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. So <clears throat> it, it's a state of mind. Mm -hmm. It's not debate with somebody else. It's not I have to convince you. Or I need to bring one more into the congregation. Yeah. No, it's none of that. Yeah. No, not at all. It's like if you want to talk about it, yeah. sure, I'd love to talk about it. But I'm going to bend your mind. Right. Because it's way more than just spirituality. It's about, it's all connected. Not just the earth, but the universe. Yep. And everything that's in it. And we are not the only things in it. It's true. And it's hard when you aren't awake to see those things, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Tony, is he your cousin? Tony Martin? How are you related? He's my uncle-in-law. Uncle-in-law. Uncle okay. Yeah. So he posted on my Facebook wall uh, this, he shared this that was people turning churches into homes. And he said, how do you feel about this? You know? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And I said, you know, well, in my in my head, some of the other things I wanted to say were at the before this, before the spiritual awakening, I probably would have thought, oh, no, why would you do that? Like the amount of like whatever in there, the different things that you would be feeling or whatever. Right. Why would you do that? But that's a perception change. Mm -hmm. Now, knowing what I know and, and seeing things more clearly, I realize that the church is wherever you want it to be. Yeah. If you do your spiritual practices at home, that's your church. Yeah. If you want to go to a spiritual center or a church and worship there, 
that's just a place where people come together Mm -hmm. and, you know, feel these things together. It doesn't mean that there's spirits trapped there or there's negative energy or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So would I buy a home that was once upon a time a church? Absolutely. If I liked it enough, I absolutely would. I love DIY shows and I've seen some of them restored to homes. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. But you can have um, spirits that lived in your home before you lived in your home. Absolutely. That, and that's not a church. No. And you can ask those people to go away. Yeah. Like if they're bothering you and it's not, it's making you uncomfortable, you can deal with that. Yeah. You know, you don't need an exorcism. No. And a father and holy water and all. You don't need yeah. that. No, you don't. You, you don't just, you ask nicely. And you have faith. Yep. And it changes. And that was a part of my response to him, too, was that, you know, in addition to that I would live in a church, I would also spend the night. You know, you see those stupid things. For a million dollars, would you spend a night in this haunted house? Sure. Because the only thing I'm really worried about in that house is spiders. Yeah. It's not the spirits that are in there because we'll just have some fun conversations and, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, it's not like that. And I think that this, you know, once you get this all out there and people start to see that this is really about perception. Um, but you know, whatever his perception is on living in churches, I totally understand. And I would never try and argue, you know, absolutely. This is my opinion. You have your opinion and, you know, I appreciate you asking for my opinion, but I don't by any means feel that you need to think the same thing that I do. No. That's where I feel like spirituality and religion is very different. Right. I don't expect you to to think the way that I think. I I would hope that if you want to think the way that I think, that you would go through a spiritual awakening and open this door up yourself, not mm-hmm. just take my word for it. Yes. You know? Yeah. So I agree. Yeah. Very so, cool. So there you go. So Anybody that's still stuck in that spiritual closet, kick that door open. Kick it open. Don't be afraid. It's There's dark lots in there. of us. Don't be scared. Yeah. Yeah. Well. There's lots of us out here. <laughs> that we will help you get yes. through it. So. And we're not the only podcast like this. There's no, a lot. There are. So yeah. There's a lot of this, this movement. Yes. Happening, and I think that's because this planet is going to come out of a dark age. It's trying to come out of a dark age. Yep. I think that the main point of this is even if it has nothing to do with spirituality, be who you are. It doesn't matter because you are going to attract the right people by being who you are. You're going to attract the wrong people by pretending to be something you're not. Mm -hmm. So you might as well just be the person you want to be. And all this is like, um, like a, you know, I, I definitely feel like the wheel of karma exists and and for me it does. And, but there's a karmic history and we all have to do our part. So if we went around and fucked off, excuse my French, (laughs) for the first 15 years of our lives and did bad things, you could change any time. Yeah, you can. You can start changing that karmic wheel in your favor or the universe's favor any time. That's right. And that... Once that starts happening on like a gl- more of a global scale, this place is going to change, man. Yeah, but we're still alive to see some of that. And if we're not, it's okay. We're yeah. going to see it. It's true. But I know. Like it would be nice to be a because, part of it. Yeah. But that's what we're doing. Yes. As we're trying to be a part of it, we're trying to say, you know, it doesn't have to be cool to be a jerk, right? Or to be angry or tough or yeah or you know, argumentative or debating religion and politics. It's like, how about just live and let live? Yeah. You know, be kind to your neighbor and, and just get the best out of this experience. It's the labels, you know, it's that we have to label everything. Mm -hmm. I saw this video today on TikTok with Bob Proctor and he's the guy that uh, wrote the secret. And Mm -hmm. he said, you know, people ask you, who are you? And I would say I'm Bob Proctor, but I'm not. I'm neither Bob. I'm neither Proctor. I'm Mm. this soul. I'm this energy. Kind of like what Jim Carrey was saying. That's exactly right. And the gentleman I was watching where he said, I was so convinced that I was this person with these relationships and problems. And then I realized it's just an act. It's just an illusion. Yep, exactly. But it's there for a purpose. But we don't 
quite understand all of that in our little minds. That's right. Yeah. But we will. Yeah, we will. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Very yeah. cool. Very good. That one was good. Yay. All right, then. Well, before we say goodbye to everybody, would you like to share your information one more time? Yes. So you can find me at samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. Everything you need is there. Schedule an appointment, the radio show, where to find us online for the podcast, all of it. And then you search. Yes, again, for my art, djonesrcollection.com for the web, at djonesrcollection for Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Fabulous. And just a quick reminder, again, I do uh, have a piece that's at Visions of Peace exhibit at the Thousand Oaks Civic Center um, in Thousand Oaks, California, if you're in the area or visiting. It is in the Fred Calvi lobby uh, of that theater. And uh, there's a lot of pieces. So yeah. we actually have to go there and look. So Yeah, we should do it. Um, but So it's there if you want to look. Very good. And I don't think they charge anything for you to go in there and look. I don't think so. But if you want to see the show, you got to obviously yeah. buy a ticket. But anyways, that's it. Fabulous. Well, we hope everybody has a great week. That we do. And until next week. Peace and love. love.